Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation of five exit strategies that will change the way you trade. Uh, this promises to be a really great educational presentation today because I'm going to share with you all these different techniques that you can start using as early as tomorrow if you'd like. Now, for example, I'd like to start off by sharing with you this snapshot, an older chart of Apple. As we can see, it's pretty much gone straight up during this time period. Now, one of our strategies actually generated a signal right here for the stock to go long. Now, in today's presentation, I'm going to share with you several different techniques where you could have exited with uh, being able to catch some really large gains and actually been able to get out right here at the very top, right before the stock started to change trends and go downward. So once again, this promises to be a great presentation. Welcome once again. My name is Stephen Primo. I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading. If you're new to my presentations and webinars, well, we are first and foremost all about educating you. We're an, strictly an educational company. You see, it's our belief that the reason why most traders fail is because they haven't been supplied with the proper education. So what's the first thing a trader does when they really don't have proper education? They start looking for answers outside of themselves. In other words, relying on some trading guru or some magic indicator or system or waiting for every news event or watching all the trading gurus on TV to tell them how to trade. This is what we feel is probably the main reason why 80 to 85% of all traders ultimately fail. So I know exactly what this is like because when I first started trading, I fell right into that category. I had a very difficult time trading. In fact, I started my career on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the floor for a total of 16 years and nine of those years I was a specialist. That's where we get the name specialist trading. Now, if you're not familiar with what a specialist does, uh, they simply make markets in roughly anywhere from 50 to 60 stocks. So if you wanted to buy or sell a particular stock, you went to the specialist or the trader who specialized in those equities. So that's what I did for a total of nine years. I traded through the crash of 1987 and the bull market that followed. I left the floor in the mid-90s to manage money, to, uh, also to teach. And I teamed up with Pro Trader Strategies around eight years ago and formulated specialist trading. So it's been my experience in my nearly four decades of trading that most traders fail because they've basically taken themselves out of the game. They're relying on someone or something else to tell them what to do. So what we do at Specialist Trading is provide you, as you see here, with insights, wisdom, and trading strategies from the floor. These were the same things that were able to turn my trading around, and hopefully they'll be able to turn your trading around and make you a consistent trader. So as you'll see in just a few moments, we're all about educating you. I'm going to educate you today with five great exit strategies that I really feel will uh, be able to turn your trading around and change the way you trade. But before we begin, as always, we are required to show you this. So please take a moment to view our disclaimer. Uh, I'm going to show you a lot of performance results using these five exit techniques. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated in the future. So once again, we are required to show you this. As you're taking a brief moment to look at it, I would also like to take this time to invite each and every one of you, if you haven't done so already, to follow us on Twitter. There's our handle right there, abbreviation for Specialist Trading. You may want to copy that down. It's at S-P-C-L-S-T-T-R-A-D-G. Every day I post free information anywhere from uh, some of the signals our strategies are generating to little uh, bits of wisdom along the way. So lots of uh, great free stuff uh, if you follow us on Twitter. Now, as I stated earlier, we are all about educating you. When I first started out, you know, I've made no secret about this. My first year or two, I traded miserably. In fact, I couldn't make a dime. Even though I was on the floor and I had access and I was privy to all this information, you know, what was going on, what the institutions were doing, uh, the orders in my book, uh, what the earnings were going to be in advance, you know, it didn't help anyway. So, you know, my mentors saw how much I was struggling and they came and taught me all of the same things that I teach to all of my students and members around the world. We have students uh, in over 110 countries around the world and in virtually every state in the United States. So we're trying to educate you and teach you so that you can ultimately uh, trade with the specialist edge. This is the same edge that turned my trading around once again. Hopefully, it'll be able to turn your trading around. As you can see here, my goal is not to forward, force feed you signals. It's not to tell you what to buy or what to sell. It's not to tell you the perfect time frame. It's simply to teach you how to trade so that you can really put yourself back in the driver's seat. 
Okay. Now, before we begin, I just want to make a few announcements. Uh, this, since it's an educational webinar, will be conducted like a classroom. And I love to take each and every one of your questions, but if we stop for each and every one of them, uh, it tends to bog down the presentation. So I will take your questions, but kindly wait till the very end. Okay. It'll be just about 20 minutes from now, and we'll go to the very end and, and answer all of the questions. The only question I will answer at this time is the most common one and that is is this being recorded yes it is we record all of our webinars and presentations so if you have to leave early or have technical difficulties uh contact pro trader strategies my sister site and they will furnish you with a link to this recording okay so if you happen to join us late remember keep the questions to the very end of today's class all right so let's begin and we're going to start out with these five exit strategies. We're going to just look at that one common chart, Apple, okay? Because it can the, these techniques and strategies I can share with you today are, are, you know, virtually able to be applied to any market, any time frame. But we're going to just show them on one chart, just so that you get a good idea and how to implement them, okay? Let's start out with strategy number one, and that is range extension. Okay, so what exactly is range extension? Well, we use this technique in a lot of our methods at specialist trading let me share with you what i mean here here's that chart we're going to be looking at in apple and as you can see that's where our buy signal was generated right here okay this was the bar so what you want to do with range extension is whenever your strategy your technique your method generates a signal regardless if it's a buy or a sell it's done on a bar in other words that signal corresponds with some type of bar it can be a five minute bar if you're an intraday trader if you're a swing trader it can be a weekly bar if you're an investor it can be a monthly bar it doesn't matter but whenever a signal is generated it's basically based off of all the requirements being met at a specific bar okay now our signal happened to be met right here when this bar closed so what you want to do with range extension is once you have that signal in place that bar is called your signal or setup bar okay and what you want to do is measure it from top to bottom the range all right in this case since we're looking at a stock we want to measure the amount of points if you're looking at a future same thing or a currency pair the amount of pips but that is going to equal 100 percent the range from top to bottom now if we were looking at candlestick charts it wouldn't make any difference it would be the top of the wick to the bottom of the wick all right the extreme highs to the extreme lows that will equal 100 percent okay now what you want to do is take that same amount of points or pips whatever you're trading and then double it and that will give you 200 percent now you can apply this as one place to exit if you want to get more bang for your buck well you simply take that same amount of points add it again and this will give you 300 percent you will exit there now the last place we always suggest to all of our members is to exit at the 400 all right and once you get to the 400 percent level we would always recommend that you exit your position entirely because we have seen in the past that oftentimes trends will end right around that 400 percent range extension as you see right here and uh, that's where you want to be out of the position entirely now once again we are an educational company we're not telling you well you have to exit here at 200 or at 300 it's up to you these are all different points in which you can exit now some of our members like to trade and be in and out of a trade rather quickly you know they don't have time or they're not in front of their computer or they like a lot of action so they like to exit their entire position at 200. whereas other traders like to say well listen you know i'm going to exit part here at two and then part at three because i don't trust we're going to go all the way up to four because oftentimes we may not get that far whereas others may say well you know what once we get up to the 200 i'll take my stop wherever it is down here and move it to unchanged and then once we get to 300, I will move my stop to the 200 exit. And if we get it to 400, well, then I'll take my stop up to 300 and so on. I'll continue to ride it all the way up until the market stops me out. All right. Now, whereas some others say, well, listen, I want to get as much bang for my buck. I don't care. I'm just going to hold on until we get to 400. You see, there's no right or wrong way to trade. The only wrong way to trade is when you just follow what someone else is doing. Okay, you have to become a part of the process. This is our credo at Specialist Trading. This is our philosophy. That the reason why most traders fail is because you're relying on someone or something to tell you how to trade. What we do is we provide you with all these different variables and we work with you and mentor you so that you can decide. Are you a, a more aggressive trader? Well, then you may want to stay in longer. Are you more conservative? Well, then you want to get in and out rather quickly. 
okay? So this is one of the exit strategies. This is strategy uh, uh, exit technique number one, and this is range extension, okay? Now remember, it doesn't matter if you trade stocks, it doesn't matter if you trade futures, and it doesn't matter if this were a short uh, you know, trade. You just simply do the opposite, but you always measure the range of the setup bar. That's the bar where the signal is generated, and that's your range, and then you can double it, triple it, or quadruple it. All right, so that's range extension, exit strategy number one. Let's go on to strategy number two, which are simply using pivot highs and pivot lows. This is a type of technique where you're going to allow the market to take you out. Now, one of the things I want to uh, stress here is that these strategies, before I go into all five, are not designed to get you out at the top if you're long or to cover at the very bottom if you're short. That's not the goal here. The goal here is just to provide you with different ways in which to exit. And sometimes they may capture more gains than your standard exit practices, okay? So we're just giving you different options, but we're not telling you that these, all of these techniques are gonna get you out at the high or in at the low. It's, that's not what their uh, design is for. In fact, you're gonna see that with pivot highs and pivot lows. Now, if those of you who aren't familiar with what a pivot high or pivot low is, then let's go and give you a brief uh, refresher course. Here's what a short-term pivot high is. It's a basically a three-bar pattern. Now, this is an ideal scenario of what that would look like. Remember, these represent three bars. They can be tick charts, five-minute bars, daily, weekly, monthly. It doesn't matter. But a pivot high is when you have a high created by one bar, then bar number two creates a higher high, and then bar number three creates a lower high. So you create this kind of an upside-down V or kind of an arrowhead approach. Now, you're going to see and work with short-term pivot highs in markets that are downtrending. So in other words, as the market is going lower, you'll see a short-term pivot high, and then the market will go lower, then you'll see another short-term pivot high, and we'll show you exactly how to implement it in just a few minutes. But if the market is going higher, as we saw in the Apple chart, well, then we're gonna be looking for short-term pivot lows. So it's just taking that last pattern and turning it upside down. We have, once again, three bars, regardless of the time frame. Bar number one creates a low. Bar number two creates a lower low and bar number three creates a higher low. So now you have this kind of a V look. You're gonna see and find these and work with these short-term pivot lows when the market is going up. So you're gonna apply them to uptrend. So as you'll see one here, as the market continues higher, then maybe you'll see another of those patterns up here. Let me show you what I mean here. Let's go to the chart of Apple once again. We're gonna use the same entry and buy signal in all of these. And as we can see here, as the stock went up, we look back in hindsight, a pivot low was created here, all right? We had a low followed by a lower low and then a higher low. So this is where you'd place your first stop, just below there, okay? Now, once again, it's up to you as to how far below that you wanna place your stop. It can be, you know, one or two ticks. It can be a full point. Uh, having said that, it's always up to you because remember, you're in charge. You are the one who is making the decision. Many of our students like to place it one tick below. A lot of them like to place it a half point or maybe even a point below. It's up to you. All right, so as we can see here, you place your stop and the stop continues to go higher. And then we have, it's hard to see here, but we actually have another pivot low right here. Here's a low followed by a lower low and then a higher low. So in all actuality, even though they look like they're just the same uh, distance, they're actually creating a pivot low. So you place your stop just below that. And unfortunately, you would have been stopped out. So that's your exit. Now you still captured a very nice profit here, but it didn't get you out at the top because remember, once again, these aren't designed to get you out at the top or in at the bottom if you're short. They're designed just to give you different options in which to have exit patterns, okay? Now sometimes uh, using this will keep you in a trade and will get you out at the top, but there's no guarantee. Uh, Let's go on to the third one, but before we do, I see that some people are asking questions. Remember, if you happen to come in late, keep the questions till the very end. Let's go and explain this process first before we stop every couple of seconds for a question, okay? So hold off for the questions for the next 15 or 20 minutes. All right, so that was exit strategy number two, using pivot highs and pivot lows. Let's move on to exit strategy number three, which is probably the easiest one to apply. You can start doing that as early as tomorrow. It's simply by using a nine period exponential moving average. But how are we going to apply this to our chart? All right, well, as we see, once again, we have our chart in Apple. Here's where we entered right here on the, on the left. That's our entry bar. 
And once you're in the stock, what you want to do is apply a nine period exponential moving average as we see here. Now, the way this works is once you close below, that's where you're either going to, you're going to be presented with two different variables. You can either exit once you have a close below, or you can place a stop just below that bar. The only caveat is you have to give yourself a little time to let this you know, uh, grow a little bit. In other words, as we see here, we entered into the trade and oftentimes, not in this scenario, but oftentimes you will just go up one day and then the very next day you'll close below. So you wanna give yourself maybe about two to four or five bars closing above before you start to apply this technique. Give your uh, trade a little bit to grow, a little bit of time to grow before you start uh, applying this, okay? Because as I stated, not in this scenario, but oftentimes you may see you enter the trade and then the very next bar closes below. Well, that would be getting out a little bit too early. You wanna see that you've started to go in your direction before you apply this. So here we've got about three to five bars that we have headed in, in a direction above the nine period exponential. So now it's okay to apply this. So we start looking and we see that we've entered bar gone below the moving average, but remember we need to close there before we can do anything. So we haven't closed there, so we're still long in the trade. Okay, we're still long, we're still long, we're, we're holding on to our position. And right at this point, we see a bar that looks like it closes, but if we had a magnifying glass, it, I'm sorry, this is a static presentation, we're, we're on a, a PowerPoint presentation. But if we had a, a, you know, a, a magnifying of this uh, chart, we'd see that we closed right on that line. So this doesn't count as an actual uh, cell setup. And then the very next bar, you open below, but then closed up. So this is why we always say it's imperative that you close below in order to apply a stop or exit at the market. So we still have not closed below. So we're uh, you know, riding all these gains all the way up until this point right here. This is the first close below the nine period exponential. So you have two choices. You can either exit at the market and just say, well, that was a great trade. Boy, I captured all this profit. I'm getting out. I'm saying thank you for that. Or if you want to stay in longer, what you can do is place a stop just below that bar. Okay, now we're not concerned whether this is a pivot. We don't care about that. All we're doing is placing a stop below that very bar that closed below the nine period exponential. And it would have been a good idea had you done that because look what happened the next week. You went even higher and you made uh, higher closing highs, okay? But now, as we can see later on, we have another downward day and we close below there. So once again, you can either say, I'm gonna exit by simply selling my position at the close or place a stop. Either way, you would have exited the next day because look what happened. That's when the trend turned around and you captured a lot of gains and it got you out pretty much towards the highs, okay? So a great technique, but the, the, the two caveats to remember is when you're using this, give yourself some room first, anywhere from two to five bars above this moving average before you start applying the rule. And then once you see that you have some nice profits, you wait for the first bar to close below. Either you'll exit there or you'll place a stop just below it, okay? So this is a very, very simple technique to apply you can start using as early tomorrow, and, and I encourage you to experiment with all of these techniques. All right, that was exit strategy number three. Let's get a little bit more advanced. Let's look at exit strategy number four, and what we're gonna do is apply the slow stochastic. Now, this is a very common tool found on just about every charting software. Uh, don't ask me what the uh, parameters are. All I did was go to the, uh, uh, you know, to the, uh, technical analysis, I punched up slow stochastic and that's it. Didn't do anything except change the variables to meet this strategy. So let me show you what the actual variables are. The default setting for the slow stochastic is usually set at 14. What we want to do is just simply edit that default setting. That could also be called the length setting. Just change it to five. So once again, don't ask me what this is based off because I'm not, I, I can't even tell you. This is just something I was introduced to, uh, you know, nearly four decades ago on the floor of the exchange. But what we want to do is if, it, you know, if the indicator is looking back 14 periods to come up with this calculation, all we're doing it is doing is saying, 
Well, instead of looking back 14, you're going to look back five bars to come up with the calculations, okay? Now, what those calculations are, once again, I can't answer because I don't know the inner workings of the slow stochastic. But we're just going to change the default settings from 14 to 5, okay? That's all we're doing. And the reason why we're doing that is because once you change it from 14 to 5, you'll see that we change from this very slow, kind of very smooth uh, look in the uh, stochastic to now have a more jagged look. Now, here are the five period stochastics right here, as you can see. As you can see, it's more jagged. You have these kind of quick jagged moves up and down, up and down. Now, do you remember what the pivot highs and pivot lows look like? Well, we're going to apply the same concept. We're going to, since we're going higher, we're long, we're looking for pivot lows. But we're not going to be looking for pivot lows in the stock. What we're looking for are pivot lows in the indicator. Okay, so as you can see here, these are the pivot lows we're looking for. Remember, before we were looking for the pivot lows on the chart. We're not concerned with that right off the bat now. We're concerned only with these jagged pivot lows in the indicator. That's why we changed the setting to read 5. If you had the standard default setting of roughly 14, you really wouldn't see these jagged pivot lows. It'd be more of a rounding approach. But now we have these jagged lows. So what we want to do is once we are long, we look for one of these to be created. Here's the first one that was created after we bought. And we're going to look for where the bottom was and then the previous setting. Okay, And we're going to find where those two corresponding bars are. They're right here. All right. You see, this is where the slow stochastic made a low, and this is the first up bar after that. Now, once we find the two corresponding bars, price bars, we're going to pick whichever of those two is the lowest. In other words, has the lowest low, and that's where we place our stop. OK, so remember, this stop is not based off of a pivot low on the chart. It's based off of a pivot on the indicator. So now we are long. We have our stop here, and we wait for another pivot to be created. As we can see, here it is. We have the low, and here's the first up bar after the low. Now, let's look at the two corresponding bars, all right? Which is the lowest of these two? It's the second, so that's where we'll place our stop. Now, I know a lot of you would say, well, Steve, isn't this the same as the pivots for what we looked at before? No, because remember, we would have been stopped out on this pivot right here, I believe. And then here's another pivot. We didn't even consider ourselves having those as stop placements with this technique. And as you can see here, we only base this stop off of these two bars. We haven't even you know, looked uh, for, in order to have a pivot on a stock chart, we need three bars, and we hadn't had this bar created yet. So we're just simply basing it off of the low of the indicator and the first up bar. We look to find the two corresponding chart bars, and whatever is the lowest of those, we place our stop. All right, so now we've moved our stop from here to here, okay? So now let's look for another one. Okay, we're going lower and lower, and here is the first bar after a low created, and so these are the two corresponding bars. Now, of these two, which is the lower? Well, it's this one right here, so we place our stop right here. You see, if we were using the standard pivot lows on the actual uh, stock charts, well, we would have had our stop right here because this is where the pivot low is. But using the indicator, we're only basing it off of two bars. Okay, so now we have our stop placement up here. So we've captured all of this profit. And once again, we exit towards those highs. Okay, do you see how that process is? It's similar to using pivot lows and pivot highs in bar charts, but we're basing those off of the five period stochastic. All right, so that was technique and strategy number four, using the slow stochastic. Let's go to the final exit strategy which is once again based off of a very common indicator that I'm sure you can find on most of your uh, charting software packages. If you can't find it, uh, do a Google search. I know there are some uh, free uh, stock charts and uh, uh, just different free platforms on the internet that have this tool, and that is the dodging channels, okay? Now, a lot of people are familiar with the Donjin channels. It's been my experience that the Donjin channels are a great, great tool for finding a short-term trend. All right. And uh, what we're going to do once again, just like the slow stochastic in strategy number four, we are going to alter the settings a bit so that we can help us with this exit strategy. So if you have the Donjin channels, you'll see that they're usually defaulted to a 21 period setting. Once again, that just means 
that the tool is looking back 21 periods to come up with its calculations. Once, once again, don't ask me what the calculations are. I just know that's the standard default for the Donchin channel. What we want to do is change that default setting or that length just down to nine. We want it to read nine. So that just means that instead of looking back 21 bars, it's only going to look back nine bars to come up with its calculations. Okay, simple enough. So once you've done that, you'll see we're going to look at our same chart here in Apple. We'll apply the three bar uh, daunting channels, and this is what they should look like. And you see how they really hug the price action and how they tell you what the trend is. Now, what we want to find and look for is that all three of these bars, the top, the middle, and the bottom, are all headed in the same direction. All right, this is telling us the short-term trend. But if you'll notice, they're not all in sync because sometimes one, it may be going sideways where the others are going higher and sideways and higher. It's okay. As long as they are coming from the previous setting, which was lower, that means they're going up. In other words, it's kind of a stair-step approach. That's all right. The stair-step approach, as long as the stair-step is going up and not down, that's okay. It is an uptrend. And they all must be in some type of a stair-step upward approach. Okay, so as long as they are, we continue to be in this trade. Now, we can use any stop placement we want as long as we're in this. But what's going to tell us to get out is when either one, two, or three of these all of a sudden change direction. All right, we don't need all three. Actually, all we need is one. So as we can see here, they're all in the same upward stair step direction. So this is fine. We're still in the trade until we get to here. We have one bar still going up. It's going sideways, but it's coming from a lower uh, vantage point. So it's still headed in a stair step upward progression. But look what happened to the middle and the lower daunting channels. They're now headed lower. So the daunting channels are out of sync. Remember, we need all three to be going in the same direction. Now here we have two that are going down and one is still headed upwards. It wouldn't matter if we only had one headed down and two others still going up. As long as they're not in sync, that's our signal to exit. We exit at the market and we see that the trend has changed. So this is once again a great, great tool for finding the short term trend. And oftentimes it will get you out early. But, uh, you know, it all depends, uh, you know, maybe the, it's not going to have a sustained trend such as you see right here. So oftentimes you may want to get out early. So it all depends. What I encourage you to do with all these different strategies is basically to review them as what we're going to be doing right now. You can watch this video as often you'd like and to paper trade. Please, I know a lot of you, your eyes may be lighting up right now thinking this is fantastic. I could have, you know, captured so much more gains using these techniques. Sure, I'm sure you can. And a lot of our students use these techniques and our courses and members around the world uh, have told us that their uh, trading has become more consistent using these techniques. But we want you, since you're going to be in charge of using this, we're not telling you which one to use. It's up to you. You must practice first. So please paper trade. One of the biggest mistakes most traders make is they jump in too quickly. And, and then they go and inevitably they uh, suffer a series of losses. And then they throw the stuff out the window saying this stuff doesn't work. It's not that it doesn't work. It's because you jumped in too quickly and you really didn't understand the process fully. And maybe you implemented it incorrectly or maybe you didn't apply the correct settings. And that's why it uh, generated losses. Not because it wasn't a, a good uh, technique, but more so because you were implementing it incorrectly. So paper trade for us. I mean, think of any profession, an athlete, uh, an entertainer, a uh, movie star. It really doesn't matter. Uh, they all go through a series of practices before, rehearsals, uh, practice games, anything prior to the real event. So this is what we're saying. The same thing of you is that as a trader, you must practice first. And the practice we call is paper trading. OK, so let's review all these five strategies. And remember, we showed you uh, this as applied to a, a one stock that's going up. Remember, if you're short, if you trade options, it makes no difference. You know, you can use whatever these uh, exit strategies are to, to either be long or short, to trade options, futures, currency pairs. It really makes no difference. OK, let's review range extension. Remember, whenever a signal is generated, doesn't matter if it's one of my strategies, doesn't matter if it's one of yours that you created or something from another educator. 
it's always associated with a bar when everything comes to place. Either it's based off of a news event, either it's based off some indicators crossing over, maybe it's even based off the, the full moon, who knows? But whatever it's based off, there's a bar that is associated with that, whether it's a five minute bar, a tick bar, or a monthly bar. That bar will be your setup bar or your signal bar. What you wanna do is simply measure the range of that once that bar closes from top to bottom, okay? If you're looking at candlesticks, measure the range from the top of the wick to the bottom of the wick, and that's your 100% range. Now, all you do to find out where to exit is to simply double that and add that amount of points or pips to the top of that range, and that's your 200% range extension. You can exit there. If you'd like to get more gains, then add another uh, level, and that will give you 300 and then still 400. We always suggest, though, to be out of the position at 400 because oftentimes that's where the trend changes. So this is a great way to stay in a trade as long as possible. We also talked about pivot highs or pivot lows. Remember, if a stock is going up, you're gonna be looking for pivot lows. It's a three bar pattern where it makes a low, then the next bar makes a lower low, and then the next bar makes a higher low. As you can see right here, we make a low, a low, and a higher low. Here is a pivot, and you'll place your stop just below there and continue to track it all the way up. That's based off of the bar chart. Let's go on to exit strategy number three, which is probably the simplest, and it's just adding a nine period exponential moving average. Remember, the uh, rules with this particular technique are give your trade a little bit uh, of time to grow. In other words, give it anywhere from two to five bars where it closes above the nine period exponential moving average before you apply the technique. Now the technique is the first close below that you can either exit at the market or place a stop just below there, all right? Now, we know that not every market allows you to place stops, so if it's stocks, place a mental stop, or just know that, that you're gonna sell once it goes right below that bar, okay? So that's a very simple one, but a very valid uh, strategy to apply the nine period exponential moving average. All right, we get a little bit more advanced and we go to the slow stochastic exit strategy number four. And that's what we're gonna do is simply take the standard slow stochastic, on, on most of your charting software packages and change the setting, okay? We're changing the setting from a standard default of 14 and all we're gonna do is change it to five. If you have trouble doing that or don't know exactly how to do that, whatever charting platform you apply, just contact your tech support and they should be able to walk you through it and show you how to do that, okay? Very simple. But the reason why you wanna change it to five is so that you'll have those jagged edges in the indicator because this particular strategy calls for looking for pivot lows and pivot highs based off of the indicator and not the actual bar chart. So once you find those pivot lows or pivot highs in the uh, indicator, then look for the two corresponding bars and that's where you place your stop, just below the lowest one if you're long or above the highest one if you're short. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's go on to our final exit strategy, and that's using the Donchin channels, a great tool we use in a lot of our methods of uh, specialist trading. And once again, if you have trouble finding that, if your charting software doesn't allow you to have that, uh, do a Google search. I know freestockcharts.com has that uh, indicator available. And what you want to do is change the setting. Now the standard setting for the Donchins are usually, uh, I believe, set to 21. What you want to do is change those settings to nine. So we're going to, you know, speed up the way the tool uh, comes up with its calculations, the way the indicator comes up with that, its calculations, because we're going to look for the defined short-term trend. And you want to see all those three dodging channels in sync with another, okay? You want to see them all in sync with another. And once one of them goes out of sync with the, with the, the remaining two, that's your uh, indication that the trend is most likely changing and you want to either exit or tighten up your stop okay these are great great strategies we apply them in one way or another and most of our uh, techniques and methods at specialist trading uh, go to the pro trader uh, strategies website you'll see tons of testimonials about uh, from traders who have used our techniques and methods and for the very first time in years have become consistent using our educational tools 
So remember, I know a lot of you are saying, well, God, this is great, but Steve, I don't trade stocks. I, you know, I, I'm not a stock trader. That's okay. Let me show you a chart of the E-mini S&P. Here's an intraday chart. I trade the E-minis on an intraday basis. Here's an actual signal that was generated a couple of months ago going short the E-mini futures, okay? This was an actual sell signal by one of our strategies. Now, if you wanted to use exit strategy number one, range extension, we would apply the same rules I just taught you. Here's the bar where we decided to go short so we measure the range from top to bottom. That's our range. Then we simply would subtract that range. Uh, we subtract that amount, amount of points once would give us 200% uh, exit level. We do it one more time to give us 300 and then one more time to give us 400. So let's say we got short on this bar here. Well, look what happened. All right, we could have applied this and, and exited our trade at any one of these points for a profit. But remember, the suggestion is to always get out of your position entirely at the 400% because even here on a five minute chart, look what happened after that. The trend changed and started to go the other direction. How about if you trade the currency pairs? Well, let's look at the Forex markets. In fact, let's look at an older chart of the Canadian dollar. Here's a weekly chart. So let's say you like to invest in the Forex markets. Here is another buy signal that's generated by one of our strategies in the Canadian dollar. What if we wanted to apply the nine period exponential moving average to see if we could capture a lot of these gains? Okay, all you have to do is just simply, it doesn't matter what time frame. We're looking at a weekly bar here. All right, we still add the nine period exponential. And here's what we were talking about. We entered on this bar here. Look what happened the very next bar. We would have closed below. Now, this is why we say give your trade a little bit of time to grow. So had you used the technique and just blindly followed the rules incorrectly, you would have exited and said, this doesn't work. I took a loss here. All right. Well, actually, if you wait for it to close anywhere from two to five bars above, that's where you start implementing this technique. OK, you could still keep your stop somewhere down here, let's say. And then once you did that, then you start looking to see for and look for the first close, which was right here. OK, that's where you're going to exit now as you can see we didn't get you out at the top that's okay we're not that's not our goal and that's not our purpose our purpose is just to have the markets tell us what they're doing now, at this point we close below the nine period exponential so we're either exiting or we could have placed a stop just below that bar either way it was a good decision because look what happened all of a sudden the trend changed and now we're going the exact opposite way so either way even though this technique wouldn't have got you out at the top it still was a great technique because it saved you from giving away all of your profits. So as you can see, it doesn't matter if we trade stocks. It doesn't matter if we trade intraday futures. It doesn't matter if we trade weekly bars in the Canadian dollar. You can apply this to uh, commodities as well. These techniques work great in any market, in any time frame, and in any direction. So there you have it, five exit strategies that I really believe will change the way you trade. As always, paper trade these methods first. There's so much to learn from that simple practice of paper trading, uh, however long you feel comfortable. So as long as you understand the process and you can use one of these techniques that really feel great with your style of trading. I, I would suggest paper trade all of them, and then pick one or two that feel the most comfortable with your style. You know, I, I wouldn't suggest using all five of these all the time because then you'll get yourself too confused and wonder which one you should be uh, in and out of. So just pick a couple that you feel comfortable with and then apply those. But paper trade first so you can decide which ones work best with your style. Now, before we go to question and answer, I would like to ask you a question. Now, I want to ask yourself and ask yourself honestly, do you think these edges could have helped your trading this past year. In fact, we're at the beginning of a brand new year here. We've already completed the first month of 2017. How is your trading going? Are you anywhere near where you thought you would be You know, one month into the year? I, I can almost say that most of you are not there because it's very normal. This is the way most traders trade. They're you know, basing all of their decisions off of what someone or something else is, is telling them to do. And when it doesn't work, it's extremely discouraging and frustrating. I know I've been there. I, I did that for nearly two years and it wasn't until I was lucky enough to have mentors that my trading turned around. Well, this is what I want to do for you. OK, I'm going to offer you a very special discount today for a great, very, very informative uh, educational package we have. This is our Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist training sessions. About three or four years ago, I was asked to be the, the a featured speaker at a seminar in Denver, Colorado. 
And I spoke for three hours. The, the place was packed. There were a lot of people that came to see uh, all the speakers and came to see me speak. And uh, for the three hours that I spoke, they were uh, videotaping the entire presentation. Now, what uh, this uh, three-hour session is, is that video of the uh, presentation I gave. And in the presentation in Denver, I talked about many more high probability trading edges, okay? Uh, these are things that I didn't even discuss today. I talk about which indicators to use, but most especially which ones not to use. I went into the, the very, very uh, strong difference between a system versus a strategy. I shared what I felt the number one chart pattern is that you should have in any strategy or any technique, the number one chart pattern that you should be looking for in anything that you trade. I told you about being on the right side of the market. It's a great, great tool that can put you on the right side, regardless of what strategy or method you're using. But I think the most valuable thing in this three hour video uh, uh, session is that I gave the complete rules, entries, stop placement, exit to one of our best pullback strategies in terms of consistency. And that's strategy number one. In fact, let me show you a couple of examples. Here was an example in HAL just a few months ago coming into November. As we can see here, the stock had a really nice run up and then all of a sudden started to fall out of bed. In fact, it broke below this uh, most recent low. So a lot of people were saying, well, you know, the chat room I go to says that we broke support here. Uh, the institutions are dumping this stock. They've been dumping it for a while. The volume has really picked up. So these are the things I, you know, base my decisions off of. So I'm going to sell this stock or I'm going to stay out of it. Okay. Once again, this is the way most people make their decisions. You see how you're judging it off of someone or something else. You're looking at some convoluted indicator or you're basing it off of what institutions are doing. At specialist trading, all we do is listen to what the market we're following is telling us. And we tell you with special patterns and indicators how to do that. It's extremely simple because strategy number one didn't follow the pack and, and get in line to sell. What it did was actually generate a buy signal. All right, this was in the beginning of November, and then look what happened to the stock. Went straight up after that, okay? Now, the same thing can happen to the downside. As we look here in PBI, we see here that the stock is kind of in a range, but it looks like as if it's made a bottom here. All right, a lot of people were thinking, well, we've bottomed out. It's time to buy this. It looks like we're going to be making new highs. But strategy number one actually generated a sell signal because it foresaw that this was actually just a pullback in an overall downtrend. That this wasn't the beginning of a new uptrend. It was actually just a snapback rally waiting to go lower. And as you can see, the stock fell out of bed the next day after the signal. So you can apply options to these strategies. You can actually trade them. You can trade them on futures intraday. You can intraday you, uh, uh, apply them to stocks or currency pairs. Absolutely makes no difference. You get the full rules for entry, for stop placement, for exit placement all included in this jam-packed uh, three-hour training session course. Now, as I stated earlier, my sister site, which is Pro Trader Strategies, they have this marketed on their website for close to $1,000. That's how valuable it is. But for all the attendees today, we're dropping it drastically down to $37. But this is for a limited time only. I believe it's only going to be for 24 hours. So if you really want to get all this information, different ways in which to trade, such as what I presented today, but entirely different, entirely new, plus a full-fledged strategy, one of our most consistent pullback methods, I would strongly suggest taking advantage of this right now. For only $37, you can't beat a deal like that. Here's how to do this. Go to Pro Trader Strategies. They are my sister site. You can email them at the email address there or call them up directly, but probably the best thing to do would just simply go to the, uh, as you can see here, go to the um, link that is provided below. Now, this is not a live link. This is actually something you'd have to copy and paste onto your browser. But if you go into the right-hand corner of the GoToWebinar uh, chat box, you'll see under the chat category, there is a live link posted there, okay? So you can simply click that on. It will take you to the sign-up page where you can get all of this for $37 and you'll be running and uh, watching the video. Now, this is yours to keep. A lot of people have asked questions in the past and said, uh, is this something that, uh, you know, disintegrates in, in uh, uh, two weeks where I have to watch this for a limited time and then it, it, it comes back? No, this is yours forever. So for $37, you'll be able to have this video at your access wherever you want. It's not something that needs to be sent to you. It's a link to a recording. So you can watch it whenever you'd like.
So uh, you can watch it on your lunch break. You can watch it during the weekend. You know, you can use these techniques and the strategy. And then a year later, get a refresher course from this three-hour presentation. But it's a great, great uh, session to learn from. Once again, it was taped from a, a seminar I uh, presented to a lot of people in Denver about three or four years ago. And you're getting all this just for $37. So I'm going to leave this information up there. Remember, this link you see at the bottom is not live. If you want to go to the live link, simply go to the chat box and the GoToWeber webinar column on the right and click that on, and it will take you automatically to the sign-up page. Now, I want to thank you for holding off on questions. I promised I would take each and every one of them. So thanks. Let me open up the question and answer box. Let's see. Uh, Let's see, the first one is from Inno. He says, I get double text mixed with a presentation on the VIX. What can uh, I do to stop that? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, I would contact ProTrader Strategies. Yeah, we're not we're not presenting on the VIX today, so I'm not sure exactly what uh, uh, what that is. It's, it says, uh, let's see, my uh, another question. My software does not feature da Jontian channels. They look a lot like Bollinger Bands. Can I use that instead? Not really, uh, because Bollinger Bands are very smooth. Remember, dodging channels, we want that kind of a stair-step approach. If you remember, the three-bar uh, indicator had a stair-step approach, and that's how we know when to get out of a trend when one of them changes direction. With the Bollinger Bands, they're always going to be in sync with another, so, so it's, it really can't help with this. Uh, I would I would say... Uh, you know, do a Google search. I remember uh, freestockcharts.com offer dodging channels where you're able to apply them, okay? Uh, uh, do these techniques also work in other time frames? Yes, I've stated uh, numerous times they work in any market, in any time frame, and in any direction. In fact, I showed you a lot of examples in uh, five-minute charts. I showed you weekly bars. So it doesn't matter. They, they, they all work, okay? Uh, let me see here. Um, does this work in the currency pairs? Yes, it does. Uh, I showed you a lot of uh, currency pairs examples as well. Uh, it, it, you know, one of the things we've noticed is that a lot of educators, you know, they have a great method or technique, and it only works in one market or it only works in one time frame. Okay, you know, that's that's to me. If you really have a good method, it should be able to work in, in multiple markets and multiple time frames. We're happy to say that each and every one of our techniques work in any market you're trading. So that's the beauty of this. If you like to trade multiple markets, we have many members around the world who not only trade, let's say, currency pairs, they trade futures. So it's not like you have to buy an entirely different package. You can use the same uh, uh, package for uh, and a method for both of them, all right? And the beauty is you're getting, with this three-hour uh, video seminar, tons of information for only $37. In fact, I would venture to say that most of you probably spent more than $37 today trading the markets if you traded today. In fact, you probably spent more than that just in commission costs alone. So I can't think of a better deal. Uh, I think this uh, deal is just going to be going on for the next 24, but probably no more than 48 hours. So I would take advantage of it as soon as you can. I mean, $37, you can't even go out for dinner for less than the, you know, 60, 75 bucks these days. So $37, this is a lifetime of education. If you remember at the very beginning of the presentation, I said our sole goal, our only motivation is to educate you. And this $37 deal is jam-packed with education. So please take advantage of that, okay? Remember, once again, if you're having difficulty or uh, if you want to see a video of this, contact Pro Trader Strategies. That's their email address and their phone number there right in front of you. But I wouldn't hesitate on this $37 deal because in, most likely in a day or two, it's going back, back up to $997. You want to take advantage of that as soon as possible. Okay, as we conclude here, I want to thank you so much for attending today. I hope you got something out of it. As you can see, we really give a lot of attention to detail in educating you, and I hope you were able to at least get something out of this. You can start applying to your own trading and see how much you know information we have to share with you. Thank you so much for attending. I look forward to all of you becoming students of mine, and I look forward to you becoming members of the $37 uh, Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist course. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.